Hi there, YouTube. Thanks for joining us today, where we are live from our headquarters location in Downers Grove, Illinois. Of course, I'm Kelly from CompTIA, and this is our first live broadcast on YouTube of 2020. We're joined by another friendly face. Do you want to introduce yourself to anybody who might not have seen you on one of our previous broadcasts? Yes, I am Patrick Lane from CompTIA, and I'm a product manager for the cybersecurity certifications, formal titles, uh, director of product management. Um, but I spend my time managing and growing Security Plus, Pentest Plus, CISA Plus, which is CYSA Plus, and also CASP Plus or CASP Plus, as you can see here. So I'm part of the cybersecurity career pathway, and the skills uh, that are part of that are what I manage. Now, if you are new to the channel or this is your first broadcast that you're tuning into, Patrick is one of our frequent guests because we love to talk about our cybersecurity offerings on this channel. If you subscribe to this channel, you can be notified every time we go live. And certainly the best compliment that you can give us is liking this video and sharing it with a friend. Today, we're talking about compliance issues in cybersecurity. It may not be one that you're familiar with, but believe me, you will be. So first of all, what is compliance? What are some examples that people may have heard of? Sure, well the definition of compliance in IT would be the action or fact of complying with a regulation. And there are several major regulations that we have to comply to. And each of these regulations comes from a different industry because different industries such as healthcare or finance or uh, defense, they have common problems common problems and they need to fix them. So they issue guidelines essentially and that's what the regulations are. Like for instance you might have in the finance industry, well they have credit card numbers that need to be um, encrypted, you know, whenever they're on a server or being sent uh, over the wire. And so PCI DSS actually stands for Payment Card Information Data Security Standard. There won't be a quiz on this later. <laughs> but you see why the finance industry would want all of you know everyone who works with credit card numbers to encrypt them. This makes sense. Right, it's the basic of our, basis of our economy. Exactly. And so then when we look at healthcare, guess what the most important thing to them is? It's patient health information, PHI, also known as PII, personally identifiable information. But they have all these health records and they need to make sure they're transmitted to doctors, to insurance companies securely. That's its own set of problems and that's why they have HIPAA. And HIPAA is, uh, stands for Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. And you'll find that in the United States. Um, also, if you look at the defense industry, and in the U.S. particular, uh, the U.S. Department of Defense has a lot of different um, compliance <laughs> standards. Um, Certainly. <laughs> but one of the main ones... I should is, hope so. Well, yeah. And one of the main ones is called FISMA. And that's uh, essentially the Federal Information uh, Security uh, and Management Act. And it basically requires all the agencies of the government to uh, have a you know, cybersecurity policy that protects all of their data. And that makes sense because you're dealing with national security. You might expect more regulations in the defense. Um, and so you know, whether you're in the US or whether you're in another country, uh, you will have similar standards. I mean, there's also GDPR, which just came out, and that's the General Data Protection Regulation in Europe. If you're storing data over there, you have to make sure the data is uh, protected on their servers and stored on their servers in their own countries. And then when you look at things like um, the California Consumer Privacy Act that just went into place uh, a few weeks ago mm -hmm. on January 1st, uh, the CCPA, yeah. um, that's similar to GDPR, but you know many expect the California model to eventually be a GDPR model that the whole U.S. Uh, you know, may at one point uh, implement. But it's all about securing uh, customer data. And that the California regulation explains why all of us got a deluge of emails from different places saying we've changed our privacy acts or having to agree to a new set of pixel or cookie regulations on websites over the past couple of weeks. That's right. So these sound like, you know, pretty dry bureaucratic stuff, but it's what's <laughs> protecting the U.S. economy, the way we do business, the way that yeah. we maintain our medical privacy, the way that our defense operates on a daily basis. So what does compliance mean for a cybersecurity professional or what does it mean for that industry? We're finding it's impacting cybersecurity a lot, uh, mainly because you have these, these regulations that I've discussed and let's pick one. 
um, let's say the PCI DSS. I'll let you pick. Industry. I'll let you pick okay. that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, each one of these regulations that comes out has a, a series of cybersecurity controls under it. And depending on the regulation, there will be a lot of cybersecurity controls or very few cybersecurity controls. These cybersecurity controls are what impact us as cybersecurity workers because the controls are essentially tasks that you might find, such as you know, back up, make sure all the systems are backed up you know, uh, regularly. That may be one of the controls. Uh, another control might be make sure all your uh, credit cards are encrypted. You know, in fact, it would even be broader than that. It would just be secure credit card information, or even broader than that. You know, secure, uh, you know, finance um, information. You know, for each customer, it could be that broad. And so, the job of the cybersecurity pro is to actually implement those controls. So, you look at something like HIPAA. It might have you know over a hundred cybersecurity controls. Could you think about what they would be? It would be right. things like you know, make sure that the patient data as I stated earlier, is secure while it's going to the doctor, while it's going to the insurance company. It was, and then you know, permitted to the, uh, submitted to the patient, too. There's so many facets of it. I, I, exactly. And then in uh, PCI DSS, you know, finance, you want to make sure that the credit card number is stored, I encrypted, so if someone finds it, they can't read it, and mm -hmm. that it's also transmitted, you know, over the wire. And so these are all compliance. Uh, these are all cybersecurity controls. And so you might have 100 or 150 for HIPAA, depending on which ones you choose and which ones affect you. But if you go over to defense, you probably have over 1,000. Wow. In fact, if you want a great list of cybersecurity controls, I would highly recommend going to the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, NIST. <laughs> they have a, um, a special publication called SP853. That list every single cybersecurity control for non-classified material that the defense industry uses. And this NIST SP853 document is used around the world by all countries. Wow. So if you want to get a great idea of what cybersecurity controls are, how they're going to impact you, go look at that document. It, it couldn't explain cybersecurity controls better. But it's got over a thousand, because remember I was like saying the regulations in defense uh, it's national security, and so you're dealing with far more versus something like PCI DSS, you may even have just 50 or 60. And if we go back further in time to SOX, our, uh, which is uh, Sarbanes-Oxley. Oh, had, wow, it, vintage. It had, yeah, vintage. It had less than 10 cybersecurity controls because it was really a matter of maintaining documents for at least seven years, I believe that was the case. Uh, for regulatory issues, uh, so you couldn't just throw out all your finance information at the end of the year. You had to keep it around for seven years and, and audit yourselves, so, you know, and things like that. And we'll make sure to link those regulations in the description of this broadcast after we're done for people who are interested in looking at those. Yeah, and there's a lot of them, and so you don't have to memorize them. <laughs> it's just be aware of them at this point. And you know, when you break it down as a series of tasks that a cybersecurity professional has to manage, yes. the person who understands that suddenly becomes far more valuable in the industry as well. Right. I'm here to try to make sense of it because out in the industry there's so much confusion. But if you boil it down, it's really regulation by industry, cybersecurity controls that are attached to it, and then those tasks that have to be carried out by an IT team. Well, and I think that there's something to be said of if you understand the regulations and you're the person who's in charge of that compliance, that's job security. Those regulations aren't going away. Well, no, they're not. We actually expect uh, the industry, all industries, to become more um, regulated as we move forward. And one of the reasons uh, we're here today is just to kind of you know, sound the warning so for we can prepare uh, IT departments for the, in the coming years what to expect. Are there particular industries that are more regulated than others that you have your eye on? Yes. Uh, the three main industries that we're finding, um, as far as you know, who CompKia works with, uh, would be finance industry, healthcare, and defense, as I said, appear to be the most regulated. However, there's smaller industries, like when you get into national security, they're probably going to have even more. I mean, if you talk about uh, you know, compliance for nuclear power plants in Japan, you know, for example. Um, I mean, there's a lot of other regulatory standards, but in general, those industries affect us at CompTIA uh, the most. Absolutely. Um, and finance, by the way, includes things like um, insurance, 
financial services uh, in, in banking as well. Excellent. So how are IT departments adapting to accommodate these compliance issues? What we're finding is that IT departments are breaking up into two teams, and in some cases two departments, depending really on how large it is. So when you get into these heavily regulated industries, which I mentioned, finance, healthcare, and defense, you're often going to find your more mature IT departments broken up into two teams. And so you'll have your traditional IT team, but you'll also have cybersecurity managers. So there's a cybersecurity management team, and there's your traditional IT workers. Now, I've been in IT for about 25 years, and you know, in the past we were just the IT infrastructure team. As regulatory came uh, more and more involved with us, uh, a lot of that came with uh, RS Sox, uh, um, which was the Sarbanes-Oxley, and then in 2002 we had FISMA for the defense industry, and I've worked heavily with the defense industry. Um, and what we have found is that they're starting to have additional titles in their departments. So you're now going to find security managers. You're now going to find security analysts, which you didn't have before, that focus on this compliance issue. Um, as a company becomes more and more regulated, especially in finance, they are breaking up into two completely different teams. And I wanted to explain how that works, because it's actually quite simple when you pull out and look at it with the 30,000 foot view. So let's take an example of one of the cybersecurity controls I mentioned, and let's pick an example in finance. So right now, that means we're up against PCI DSS, means we've got to make sure that our credit card numbers are, are uh, safe. So there is going to be a cybersecurity control that states you have to have your data, your credit cards secure. That will go to a cybersecurity manager. That's their responsibility to ensure that task goes down because they have to document it to make sure and report it to the regulatory agency you know, through auditing processes. So you're going to have that information security manager who's going to take that and go, okay, we have to make sure there's a backup. So they're going to work with the IT team and the IT team will perform the backup. But the cybersecurity manager is going to be the one who knows that one, it has to be done and two, a uh, document that it has been done. Right. Another example, what you're going to find is continuous monitoring is a large cybersecurity control. And that is going to be found uh, in, for instance, uh, our cybersecurity analysis or CYSA plus <laughs> product, <laughs> yes. There's going to be continual monitoring in here because that's the main job of security analysts. That's what they do is continuous monitoring. And so if that is what you're regulated for. That's your cybersecurity control. You're going to make sure that you have a security operations center and a SOC team. So they would then know that, okay, you know, we have to do continuous monitoring. Here's what we're doing, right? So they are doing the continuous monitoring. If they find something, a security threat, because that's why we do security monitoring, they create a ticket on a help desk system. And guess where that ticket goes? To the IT team. So if they discover a computer that's maybe been infected with malware, they would basically write up a ticket, just like we do in our IT help desk, that would go to the IT department. You're then going to get your A-plus fellow who needs to perhaps you know, quarantine that device. Do you see how that works? Here. It's like we have a middle, uh, there's middle management now in the heavily regulated IT departments. And so I find this fascinating. Is this something that you would have predicted 25 years ago that we have layers of management within our IT departments? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't have actually. We didn't think about cybersecurity back in the 90s when we were uh, doing our networking and getting computers uh, you know, online on right. the internet attaching to it. But what we found is that you know, between our cybersecurity career pathway, we actually cover these cybersecurity management skills pretty well. Um, for instance, remember I was talking about PCI DSS? With Pentest Plus, that actually teaches how to do the pen testing uh, to ensure that your organization is actually PCI DSS compliant. There's a, a section in there that's about uh, education and pen testing. And so you can actually help your company maintain PCI DSS compliance uh, if you hire Pentest Plus certified folks. Also with CYSA+, and this is our security analyst exam, um, this right here covers security analysis. And do you remember I told you about the, 
uh, continuous monitoring. That's what this is all about. And so that's one of the reasons why CISA Plus is the fastest growing certification in CompTIA's history. And will be updated this year. Yeah, and it's going to be updated in April. In fact, our tentative date's April 21st for the new job uh, role, and it's fascinating. Um, also, you have the CompTIA Advanced Security Practitioner Exam, CASP Plus. Uh, that, believe it or not, is about half governance, half technical. <laughs> it covers uh, CISO skills. It covers IT security management skills. And so it is ideal for someone who's either working technical or working for cybersecurity management, this would be the ultimate for you because it would allow you to do the uh, manager, director, and uh, you know, C-level tasks uh, for cybersecurity management, having the technical know-how plus the governance. And so CAS Plus is ideal uh, for a, a GRC audience. Also, a term, GRC, you might hear moving forward. That's governance regulatory and compliance, GRC. And that's basically everything we've talked about today. We're basically talking about how GRC has impacted the cybersecurity career pathway. And we actually have done previous broadcasts on each and every one of these cybersecurity certifications. We'll make sure that there are links in that and you can check out further in this playlist to get more familiar with our cybersecurity offerings as well as our entire cybersecurity career pathway. Is there anything else that you want to add about GRC that I didn't ask you about? Well, I would just say stay tuned for our exam releases this year because we're going to have a lot more GRC in them. In fact, as we mentioned, CISA Plus actually will have an entire exam domain related to compliance. That's how much it's impacting folks. Um, we're also going to find Security Plus is going to have a lot more compliance in it as well, and that's coming out in November. It'll be the new version of Security Plus. Awesome. And of course, we'll be live again every time one of these products launches. If you want to make sure that you're uh, alerted to that broadcast, make sure that you're subscribed to our channel and you click the bell so that you get notified every time we go live and every time we update and upload a new video. So until then, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.